five, four, three, two, one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was late. I was having my shower orange. That's nope. why I was a little bit late. An orange that is peeled and eaten under a steamy shower. The benefit being that the steam enhances the orange's citrusy fragrance and creates a soothing experience for Jared, who is showering. Did you really try this? No. I was going to ask you whether you've ever eaten anything in the shower. I mean, I can't specifically remember any cases, but I'm the type of person that would do that, so I'm sure I have at some point in my life. I brush my teeth in the shower. some Not every time, but sometimes. Like the whole shower or just part of the shower? What? How can <laughs> you, you have the specific... Do you like, like, do you brush your teeth the whole shower and then get out and spit in the sink, or you just spit in the shower and throw your toothbrush in the shower and then wash yourself? Um, I mean, I just do it while I'm showering. So I'm, I've washed my arm. I don't like shower. I don't toothbrush my armpits or anything. I don't get if that's what you're asking. Sure, sure. No. Just use soap in the normal spots, then toothbrush in the normal spots, and and like condense the two activities basically. Like, but what time does that really save you? Forty-five seconds. How long do you brush your teeth for? You're supposed, I think two minutes. You're supposed to. Do really. That. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think I brush for two minutes. I think maybe one minute or four. Like I said, forty. Maybe I should start. But I, but I brush my tongue. Ah. You love the tongue. You gag. I know. You use the word love like other people use the word. Um, what's the <laughs> word? The the thing that I hate now. Uh, everybody says literally. Literally just means whatever you want it to mean these days. No, you love brushing your tongue. It's different. I don't than love literally. it. I just do it. I, I feel it's a, a necessary evil in life. I don't like to gag myself and almost throw up. But, but I, I feel do, like every time but I it's do come like, up, you, I've, I've you said, really oh, I really to share. And I go into tons of detail <laughs> about it. And I have tongue brushing journals. And If you brush your teeth in the shower, you probably don't want a shower orange. That wouldn't seem to mix. No, brushing your teeth in oranges are a horrible m- mixture. Yeah. I remember the first time I brushed my teeth and I had forgotten to finish my orange juice and I was like, oh, I'm going to drink that. And I was like, oh my God, this is the worst taste ever. You know what else you've forgotten to do before? To tell you that it's Sunday afternoon in the Magger. <laughs> All around the world you can hear them. Hey, hey, hey. Talking about using kind of funny stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Magger. All right, should we do some Sisk stories? Sure. Like I said, I thought these were, these. Are, I don't, there's no real good theme again, but I just thought these were really interesting this week. All right, Sisk stories. All right, so this was from Hong Kong on CNN. Asia, Air Asia boss Tony Fernandez what? has created a firestorm on social media. By not being Asian? He owns an Asian airline and he's straight up from Mexico? Come on. After sharing a photo of himself receiving a massage topless during a management meeting. That's kind of cool. The business mogul said he had a stressful week, so a colleague suggested he get a massage. The photo depicted him sitting in an office conference room, having his shoulder rubbed by a masked worker. (laughs) So what's what's the controversy is that that happened? Yeah. Is it the mask with the whole thing? Yeah, it's a picture. He's like... Is it someone uh, that works for his company? I don't know. They didn't say... It's probably a masseuse, right? You think you just like, you're the boss? You're like, hey, Jimmy. Can you put that hockey mask on and rub my shoulders? Yeah. (laughs) It's nothing nothing weird about it. It's not something I've like really into or like fantasized about. But if you could just... There's like that weird, you know, the eyes wide shut mask I keep in the corner. I actually have a few. Yeah, I do have a few masks over there. Choose whichever one you like best. (laughs) I'm just going to take my shirt off. We'll just continue the meeting. You got to talk about the uh, sales targets and whether we're going to meet him this month. Yeah, and... I had the I had the revenue <laughs> projections, but you're oh, you're taking your shirt off. Okay. Um Okay. Uh, I don't I don't I mean, that's... Maybe you can tell me about the pending strike with the aircraft you and controllers. Sure, you and... don't want to just put the meeting off for 30 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. I, run, mean, I mean, I got plenty of work to do at my desk. I dude, I eat, I eat shower oranges in my shower to save time and brush my teeth. So I brush my. Oh, I, I do the I do the toothbrushing thing. How? 
In the long Fight run, don't out. you think we're going to be, I don't know, 30 minutes ahead or something, everybody else? Yeah. If I get this massage while we have this meeting, I've just two killed you think, two birds with one stone. Can I get a foot rub? I've been on my feet for two days straight. I've been working for you. Man, I've been running I around the office weird. trying to get these revenue projections together. I didn't know we were going to. It said, Fernandez has long been vocal about his desire to foster an open work culture. <laughs> Telling CNN, I want people to be themselves. He is not. He is not in great shape either. No, like he's a little bit overweight. And in the CNN picture, they don't show the mask person. I'd really I wonder if I search, I can see that. Oh yeah, it is a mask. What kind of a mask? Ma- a masked woman. It's like a COVID mask. It's not like a. It's not like a. An eye swipe. The way they see it in the article is like. <laughs> I've always wanted to get my massage by someone wearing a smiley face mask. If you could wear that, or how about those ones where you wear it when you wear it? You're the uh, you're the old lady, and there's a baby in front of you. You're on a baby's back, or the baby's on your back. You know what I'm talking about, or no? <laughs> <laughs> you know the Everyone. Halloween costume where it's set up that your head comes up, and you have a ma- you have a little mask on your face, but your face is. Either I think your face is a baby and you're on an old lady's back, or you're a baby. I don't know, I mean an old lady and there's a baby on your back. I can't remember. It's just uh, it's just not making. Oh, I wish you weren't laughing at me because I'm pretty sure this is making sense. <laughs> I think the baby one would make sense. Have you ever heard of Johnny Kulan? There's a picture of him right now with Muhammad Ali that I'm looking at. He was a French boxer. He was 76 years old in the picture, and Muhammad Ali was normal age. What's normal age? Like when he was still fighting? Yeah, he was like 30-something. So he's 40 years older than Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali's 100 now, 140-year-old person. Kulan sounds like it should have to do with like um, ice cream. He was an ice cream magnate, uh, European ice cream giant. Nope. <laughs> he was. Uh, Do you want to know? When or you people, when you when you remember, in like the '80s, people they said they were cooling out. Say so he's a 76-year-old in this picture, former world bantamweight boxing champion. I think John- I said he was a French boxer. Did you? <laughs> so you actually don't listen to me. We've this is like two out of the last three weeks. <laughs> Um, he was a Canadian American p- boxer, and Johnny Kulan was at seventy six was five feet tall and one hundred and ten pounds. That's like, I think that's shorter than my grandmother was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what he did. This was his act. The, the the person Muhammad Ali, obviously you could do it, would lift him into the air. So that was the first thing. The his opponent, boxer, wrestler, weightlifter would would lift the. Smaller man in the air, Kulan would straighten his body, push down on the lifter's wrists, and assist in the lift. So, not too, nothing special, right? You lift a 110 pound man up in the air. All right, so then he lightly grasped the lifter's right wrist over the pulse point with his left hand and placed his right index finger on the left side of the lifter's neck near the car. Carotid artery. Carotid artery. Car- carotid. Yeah, whatever. It is speculated that no matter how much the lifter strained and struggled, they could not lift Johnny Kulan once he did that. So Muhammad Ali couldn't, like the guy has his, like one hand on his wrist, the other hand in this neck area, and Muhammad Ali cannot lift the 110 pound guy into the air. I bet I could do it. Is he still alive? <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. Somebody, once he took his ar- hand off his somebody's neck, the guy threw him out the window. That's how he died. So how did this become a news story? Was he? Did he just die or something? No, I just saw it on Twitter and thought it was amazing. Muhammad Ali um, couldn't lift him. Larry Holmes couldn't lift him. It said, at the end, both world champions laughed over it and hugged. <laughs> He used to go around and people would pay money to see it. <laughs> people like... would pay money to watch a little man touch somebody's neck and not get lifted in the air? Yes. How much were tickets? 
Let's see. This was the 19, what, probably 60s and 70s or something like that? Yeah, that 70s. So what do you think the cut tickets were? Dollar? Something like that? Yeah. 50 cents? Maybe, dollar 50? Maybe a thousand people show up? Would you pay a dollar to watch a tiny person not get lifted well, in the air? You need some other stuff going on. Maybe there's like a musical act and... Food uh, food trucks? Comedian. Yeah, you got to buy some food. It's like a festival. And, but that's the denouement of the festival? Yeah. He's the end. Hmm. You can't lift him. Wouldn't it suck to be a five-foot-tall man? I think on some level, yes, but then there's some great things about it. Like on the airplane, your seat would seem really big. Yeah. You're, I, shoot uh, pool with, I shoot pool with a little, uh, a little Italian guy who's probably maybe five feet maybe a little under five feet you probably he's I think a really they, he's a cool guy he's a real nice guy i think you he's live got longer very, very much a sense of humor about it uh, i don't know if i believe that you live longer because i know that really tall people live way shorter but i don't think it means if you're it's shorter, reverse you <laughs> as shorter you are the i think longer. it's the same i think i think there's a bell curve no. there and you want to be in the middle <laughs> shorter you are the longer you live totally inverse relationship <laughs> that's how you see the world isn't it just yep. some weird graph yeah uh, that's funny Johnny Kulon <laughs> lived to be 112 years old is that really part of the story no one could ever lift him even his <laughs> casket they couldn't lift his casket at the end <laughs> that's not true because no one was touching all the pallbearers necks yeah they made it they, yep 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 <laughs> they chopped off his wrists and put the hands on the they needed 12 necks. pallbearers but then they also had to have 12 pallbearer neck toucher guys. yeah so there's 24 people around the casket and everybody's reaching around. Um, all right so we're Places have different cultures, right? You've worked a few places. Yes. In your life. And they did have different cultures. Like when I was working at that um, Italian bakery, <laughs> it was an Italian culture. Like, hey, you gotta make it a pizza pie, Mark. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. And I'm like, I don't know where you guys are coming up with this stuff. I'm <laughs> German American. You're just talking language and then you that I don't know. you worked at the Outback, and the guy's like, you see a bigger knife? Yeah, so just different, like some are party work cultures, some are more standard work cultures. So this was an article about Trader Joe's work culture. Okay. From, you ever, you ever um, worked at a grocery store? I have not. I did, actually. Yeah, for three months, I worked at Stop and Shop. I was a bagger and the carts, and I fixed the bottle machine. This was like recent. Was this recently? No. No. When I was like 17. Okay. That makes sense. And, and I made like $4 an hour. And then they wanted to charge me union dues. So I quit. I was like, I'm making $4 an hour. Like, you're going to charge me $50? They unionize um, cart boys? Yep. We were a union. The old cart 76ers. <laughs> Did you have to go down to your union hall every Monday morning yep. and get your new assignment? Yep. You know, you know all the carts that like end up really far away. That's what we used to do when we were on strike. We take all the oh, carts. You in. sons of bitches! Did you ever aspire to be the union boss for at least for your um, your chapter? If I had paid the dues, they would have made me the boss. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway, have you ever worked in a, a supermarket? I've only worked in I worked in one restaurant in my life, and I've never I've never worked much around food. Yeah. So no, I've never worked in a supermarket. What was the restaurant like? Um, it was fine. I did maybe a year there when I was, uh, did a year. Like it was prison. <laughs> like it was prison. Uh, it was, I think I got it when I was a sophomore in high school. And then I worked there till I was like a junior in high school. And then I worked at the pharmacy next door. I worked was, that a, was that a tension at all when you left and went next door to the other job? Like, Well, I got, when I left my, I quit my restaurant job because my boss threw a bucket at me one day. Oh. And then I ended up, uh, he gave me a reference for the guy that owned the pharmacy next door. It's like, kid, kid dodges a good bucket. <laughs> yeah. One thing's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to throw a bucket at him and hit him. <laughs> I don't know if that's in your, I don't know if that's in the job description at all, but. A lot of people in the pharmacy throw buckets because. <laughs> he was, he was, uh, I guess I didn't know when I was a kid, when I was 16 years old, I didn't know what cokeheads were like but supposedly this guy was uh, a big cokehead and he got mad <clears throat> he got mad at me one day for something I 
can't even remember what it was. And he threw a bucket at me, and I was, I left, and I never went back. And uh, and then the, that was the last time I ever worked around food or, or whatever. Was there a lot of young people at the restaurant that um, worked there? Yeah, it was, you know, the cooks that I remember were all sort of like, probably mid thirties into their forties at that time. And then like the waitresses were all, they were girls that I kind of knew from around town, but they were a little older than me. So I was like 16, they were 26. And then the, the, mm. the males were like 36. Mm. Oh, I didn't know. Nobody was in. I, when I was 16 years old, I was as awkward as they come. I'm, there was no re- uh restaurant um shenanigans i'm sure there was but i was an idiot i don't remember i i'm sure some of the that i mean that stuff goes on in every restaurant so yes i'm sure it was going on but in retrospect i don't remember any like uh i remember i had a crush on what was her name there was a wait one of the waitresses there was uh, i can't remember what her name was but i had a crush on her and i was like i said sarah coulon i was 16 and sarah coulon was 26 and there was no way our love was but mm. if I touched her neck, <laughs> if I touched her neck the right way, she went limp, <laughs> and I would drag her out to my car. And... It's interesting when you reversed it on her and put it on her. Yeah, with her family name. <laughs> oh, that she had been ready for it. <laughs> I forgot the way the story was going. She did it to me. That's why I. Ref- That's right. She would cool on next pinch me, kiss me, make out with me in her car, and then go back to work. Then they'd throw buckets at you while you were uh, passed out. It was such a weird job. I don't know how I even made it a year. <laughs> I'd, always, I'd come home from work with lipstick all over me and bucket, bucket, bru- bucket bruises about my head and chest. It must have paid well though. Yeah, I got like five twenty-five an hour. I think was the minimum wage at that time yeah well what do you what do you think the culture's like at trader joe's similar i guess everybody at trader this article's about how everybody at trader joe's is like hooking up it's like a crazy culture that's going on in it like couples meeting people cheating on each other lots of stuff happening in the back rooms and it just keeps going it's like all of them is that the place where they all wear Hawaiian shirts to work? Yeah. Yep. Do you have one near you? Yeah, somewhere. I never go to it. But I'm like, you should go now and see what, like, if you get that vibe, like everybody's hooking up or. Well, Hawaiian shirts and anything involving pineapples, I think, has to do with swinging. So. I see. Kind of makes sense. Don't run into a whole lot of uh, grocery store employees that I'm that interested in. Well, you haven't been to Trader Joe's in a while. Maybe it's. Yeah, this this woman, Allison, says every Trader Joe's clerk is, uh, she could never describe one as ugly. She said everyone is good looking. (laughs) It tends to attract prospects who are young, hot, and skeptical of traditional lifestyles. Trader Joe's. There's one 9.9 miles away from me. I think you should try to get a job there and see what happens. Yeah. Could you could you take on a set? Well, this is kind of your second job. Could you take on like a third job? Like, so I'm working from eight thirty to five thirty at my shop. <laughs> I guess I'm yeah. doing Trader Joe's on the weekends, and I'm trying to bang girls and then tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what happens if it's that. You said it's like young hot people, though. Do you think the kind of bald forty seven year old new guy is going to be? Dude, they seem all the very rage. welcoming according to this article. <laughs> Yeah, when I'm reading it, I mean, working at a grocery store just must not be fun. But when I'm reading it, it just seems like that would be f- kind of fun. I have a friend. To have a bunch of people who are just having fun with each other and hanging out. I have a friend named Matt Rothman that when we were, uh, well, I mean, I use the word friend in the same way that other people use the word literally. He uh, Love, you love your friend Matt Rothman? I love him. He worked at a stop and shop when I was in high school. He was a year younger than me, and he got fired for stealing money and then going to, uh, uh, what were the casinos? What are the casinos in Connecticut? Foxwoods. What, was that the first one? Yes. Yeah. He used to take <clears throat> steal money from stop and shop and go to Foxwoods and gamble. How much did he steal? About $1.3 million, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Oh, that's quite a, quite it a, a stock. It was a shop. haul. It was a haul. 
No, I think he got. I think he got fired for stealing like a hundred dollars or something like that. It was from the bottle return. One point three million dollars from the bottle return. That's one of those stories that I remember from high school, and that's what. It, that's how I was told the story. Rothman got fired from Stop and Shop because he stole a hundred or stole money and went to Foxwoods, but he didn't get fired for. The Fox, the going to Foxwoods parts. I don't imagine that like he just told like that's what I stole yeah, the money like if he for. He just stole the money; it would have been <laughs> fine. But, but then, then he went, went and gambled underage. He went and gambled underage. We we gotta have you know we can't just let yeah. that kind of thing go. Yep. So uh, Matt Rothman, if you're out there, write in and uh, or your brother Brad. I played baseball with Brad. Uh, right. Like we talked about that story. Matt Rothman stealing money from Stop and Shop to go gamble at Mohegan Sun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I wish we had a way to search our episodes. <sighs> I'm glad we don't. We need an intern that listens to our episodes and catalogs them and comments on them on their podcast. I really, maybe I did. I mean, I, I pretty much everything I say, I feel like I've said before. Yeah. Well, we're almost at episode 100. That's the end, right? Number 100. And then, and then we're done. I think so. Sweet. Isn't it? Sweet. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we are getting close. We wrap it up. And then I talk to you in like five years. We do an anniversary episode. <laughs> like anybody would care. Like five, <laughs> yeah. five years later, we're like, you guys were back. <laughs> Crickets. That's, I was afraid if we took a week off, everyone would forget about it. So. <laughs> yeah, so we did Matt Rothman before, huh? I don't know. I just remember... You talking about your friend? You stole a hundred bucks and got fired. But well, I also, other, but I also you have other friends who had stole. I money do. And got I, have fired? The, I have the exact same story. Kevin, what was his last name? So when I I used oh, all right. So I worked at the restaurant. Donald, his name is Don. Don Early. He threw a bucket at me. I quit my job. Joe, uh, he I can't remember what his last name is. Delusia. Coolon. He owned the pharmacy next door. Hired me to deliver drugs to elderly homes and stuff around uh, where mm. we were. Uh, wait, why am I telling this story? About stealing something. Was oh, stealing? so when I was when I got hired, <laughs> this kid named you were just you were just barreling there. You're like, <laughs> I was so excited that I have something that ties things together. I told you I didn't I didn't prepare anything this week, so any sort of good stuff I'm excited about. Sure. Yep. Um. So Kevin, I can't remember his last name. Anyway, he <laughs> Kevin who? Hartman. Are you trying to say the the comedian? No, Kevin Hartman. Are you trying to say Kevin Hart? No. And now you're covering it up by saying, oh, no, no, <laughs> not. there's nobody famous named Kevin Hartman. You, there isn't? No, Kevin Hart not. is a comedian. Oh, but it, no, Kevin Hartman's a really good comedian as well. There's Kevin Hart and Kevin Hartman? Yeah. That's yep. not true. It is true. Anyway, the kid who was training me to do his job, the last day he was training me, uh, the woman had written a check, but all she did was write it the name of the pharmacy and her signature on it. She didn't put the dollar Ooh. amount. So he took a bunch of cash out of the little, you know, those little, um, you know, those, do you remember those little uh, zippered envelopes that banks yes. would use? He put, you know, say there was $200 in cash in there. He made the check out for whatever her thing was, mine, and made it even out. Took the cash out, made the thing, made the check out for the difference. And then quit. Um, quit working at the pharmacy. And he was quitting, I remember, because we were, like, coming up on the end of summer. And he went on a vacation with his family after he stole the money. And he thought, I'm retired now, everybody. I got $200. So how did you find out he stole the money? Whoever balanced the books, I guess, told me. Something like and that. Then he, and they got in trouble? Well, they put, they put me on a sting operation. <laughs> 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 I had to go undercover... And try to get him to admit to that. So I had to infiltrate. Yep. I had to infiltrate his high school ga- his high school gang and, and wow. become friends with him. And um, I think is that you you were in the cop uh, you were in Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, at, uh... it was it was like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I can see. that. But in the end, we got our man. Uh, yeah, Kevin Hartman. Kevin Hartman got out of jail, became a famous comedian though. So, <laughs> jokes on us. Should we wrap it up? Sure. I got to go eat dinner before I have duty. Uh, before I do my shower duty. <laughs> Produced by Johnny Kulon. Theme song by Maggie Ellox. 
email muga and cisco at gmail.com email us uh something you hear some story you hear or something that you want us to comment on just anything somebody just write in no no i want to be very specific email us so we could say story from our listener actually that orange shower one ross kind of emailed us about it okay so we should give him credit thank you ross yeah thanks ross for emailing us that for emailing us uh, that you could also send us the article idea in a letter. You could also send us the article longer. idea in a letter. If you want like it. It's just funny if you just repeat. Uh, put down your phone. Don't kill your wife. Uh, don't let your join somewhere where they want to chop your testicles off. Uh, uh, don't let anyone do a Vulcan neck trick to you. Get a job at Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. And if all those don't work, you can always <laughs> stick with stick the mag, with the mag room. room and everything else is cream cheese. See ya. I thought we were going to alternate every word there. But oh, we didn't if. All right. No, we're done. Goodbye. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, 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 my groom is good. My groom is good. The my groom's good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Damn, his tongue is clean.